So I just got a question um, for me to please re-explain question number two, because I think they're not really sure how I got the least common multiple of four to multiply both sides by. So what I'm going to do is let me just rewrite the equation. One half x plus three halves, and then it's x plus one. And to the person who commented this, please let me know if I'm answering your question. I believe that's what you're asking me, how I got four for the least common multiple. All right, so when I was solving this, I saw that there was fractions and I don't like to solve equations with fractions in them. So I do my best to get rid of the fraction as soon as possible. So the first thing that I need to do here is because I see that there's a parentheses and then there's a number outside of the parentheses, I know I have to distribute. That means I have to take 3 half and I have to multiply it by everything in the parentheses. I have to multiply the 3 half by x and the 3 half by the 1. After I do that multiplication, then I can go ahead and see what I can do about getting rid of fractions. So let's go ahead and multiply. First, it's 3 halves times x. So anytime you're multiplying any number by x, so if it's 4 times x, 2 times x, 3 times x, it's very simple. You just put them together. It, the answer would be 4x. Or 2 times x would be 2x. 3 times x would be 3x. So 3 halves times x would be 3 half x. Okay, so I have 3 halves x and then 3 halves times 1. So 3 over 2 times 1. I'll put 1 over 1. And then you multiply the tops. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. So I get 3 halves. Okay, so now I'm going to erase this and bring everything down. So I have 1 half x plus 3 half x plus 3 halves minus 1 fourth equals 5. Okay, so that was the first thing that I have. I had to multiply out everything that was here so that it was distributed. Once that's distributed, I can work on a way to get rid of those fractions because working with fractions can be very difficult. So the way that you get rid of the fraction is you circle the denominators. So in this case, the denominators are the bottom numbers on the fractions and the bottom numbers are two and four. I don't have to write two, two, two because two and four are the two different numbers that are the denominators. So now with least common multiple, I just have to find the multiples of two and four. So multiples just means I'm counting by that number. So I'm gonna count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And then I'm gonna count by fours. The multiples of fours are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and 28. So now that I found the multiples, I'm gonna find which numbers are common or which numbers appear in both lists. So the numbers that appear in both lists are 4, 8, and 12. So I found the numbers that are common. Now out of those three numbers that I circled, which number is the least or the smallest number? So the smallest number that is found in both lists is 4. So I think that's where you were asking me where I got the 4 from, I'm hoping. So the 4 was just the least common multiple of 2 and 4. And remember, I got that number by looking at the denominators of the fractions or the bottom part of the fractions. The reason I'm taking a few moments to do this now, it may seem like a lot of work, but it's worth it because I'm gonna show you how using that number four, we can get rid of all the fractions and then we don't have to do them, we don't have to deal with them again to the very, very end. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this and now I know the number that I'm gonna use is the number four. The least common multiple of 2 and 4, I'm going to use 4. And I am going to multiply this entire equation, both sides, by 4. So I'm going to do 4 times 1 half x, 4 times 3 half x, 4 times 3 halves, and 4 times negative 4. Then on the other side, I'm going to do 4 times 5. This is going to eliminate each of the fractions 1 by 1 by 1 by 1. So let's start by 4 times one half x. Four times one half, and we'll just keep in mind a reminder that there's an x. 
So I'm going to put the one underneath the four because every four, oh, maybe that's what you were asking. Guys, if you said, <laughs> if you, if you guys send a comment, just please be as specific as possible. Cause I thought, um, I thought you were commenting, asking how I got the least common multiple, but now I think you're asking, how did I get four over one? So I'm going to explain that too. So every whole number, 10, 15, 20, 4, 2, 6, 8, all whole numbers can be written as a fraction in a very easy way. They are all can be written over an invisible one. They all can be written over an invisible one. So the same thing with 4. 4 is a whole number. If we want to put that as a fraction, we can write that over the number 1. The reason why I'm going to write this as a fraction is so I can easily multiply it by another fraction. So when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply the tops, 4 times 1, and then you multiply the bottoms, 1 times 2. If 4 didn't have a bottom, then I would be confused as to what I'm multiplying the bottom by. So because I put it as a fraction, I can easily see that I'm multiplying the tops, then I'm multiplying the bottoms. So 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2, 4 over 2 is the same as saying 4 divided by 2, and so the answer is 2, and then we're not going to forget that there was an x, so the answer is 2x. So I'm going to write 2x, and do you see how there's no longer a fraction? That's the point of multiplying everything by 4. So let's go ahead and do 4 times 3 halves. Again, we're going to put it over an invisible one, and we can, put over, we can put any whole number as a fraction by putting it over the number one. And now we can multiply fractions by multiplying the tops, 4 times 3, over 1 times 2. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. 12 over 2 is the same as saying 12 divided by 2. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. And there was an x, so it's 6x. Okay, so now we're going to do 4 times 3 halves. 4 times 3 halves. It's the same thing, but it gives us more time to practice. We're going to put 4 over the invisible 1, just so that we can have multiplying by fractions. We could do 4 times 3 and 1 times 2. That's 12 over 2. 12 over 2 is the same as saying 12 divided by 2. i got to hurry up because my iPad is always dying, which is 6. And then we're going to do 4 times negative 1 fourth. Again, we're going to put it over 1. 4 times negative 1 and 1 times 4. That's negative 4 over 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. So that's going to be negative 1. And then 4 times 5 is 20. So look at that. All of the fractions are now disappeared. And you can go ahead and solve this the way that we solved it before. So I'll go ahead and solve this, but I'll also just tag you to the last video where I go through and I solve everything. So I'm just going to do this pretty briefly because I've already showed you this in the other video. But 4 plus 6x, 2x plus 6x is 8x. And then you're going to do 6 minus 1 is 5. And you're left with 8x plus 5 equals 20. Then you're going to subtract 5 from both sides and you're left with 8x is equal to 15. And then you're going to divide both sides by 8. And x is going to be equal to 15 over 8. And that's the answer. The reason why I didn't go any further with the 15 over 8 is because that it was one of the answer choices. So the answer choice is going to be C. So to answer your question, I'm assuming it was the second one that you were asking about how I got 4 over 1. The answer to that is any whole number can be written with an invisible one. So the number 100 can be written as a fraction 100 over 1. The number 45 can be written as a fraction 45 over 1. The reason I did that is so that when I'm multiplying it by another fraction, I can easily multiply the tops and easily multiply the bottoms. And I know what the bottom number should be, which is 1. All right, so I hope this, this answers your question. Again, I try my best to look through all of the comments. I try my best to respond to them best I can. When I do have an opportunity to make a video, I'll make them as well. And just don't forget to just ask me what you need to ask me and just continue practicing. And I'll be coming out with a practice test for the AccuPlacer QAS very soon. 
Hope you have a good rest of your day, guys. See you soon.